You are watching WPTV. Welcome back to the desk. The WP baseball season's first pitch is next Saturday, and Justin, Joe, Stephen, and Chris are here to preview the season. Now, fellas, the men's or the baseball team, the men's team, <laughs> had a winning record, uh, turning it around after a disappointing 2017. Justin, we'll go to you first. What are your key takeaways from last season? Well, as we first take a look at last year's stats as a whole, we see that they finished with a 23 and 16 record. They had 373 hits, scored 243 runs, and a 4.2 ERA. Now, I want to preface this by saying they turned it around with a young core of players. Probably one third, maybe a little bit more, are, were all freshmen, if not sophomores. So the fact that they were able to improve drastically record-wise and be above 500 was great to see. But also they have a lot of things to fix. But nonetheless, the young core as a whole can grow together. This team could be great for the next two or three years. Joe, I know you weren't here this time last year. <laughs> But what have you seen for on paper from this team? On paper, uh, that 4.02 ERA kind of stands out to me. It's a little bit high. If you're giving up four runs a game, you know, on average, they say pitching wins championships. So if this team wants to make a long run, I would expect them to try and get under the four run mark because you put up, you know, the other team puts up four or five runs, then you have the offense playing catch up, and it's just not a good situation. Steven? Well, I, I want to go off of what you said, Justin, the, the young core of this team. The freshmen stepped up huge last season and, and that was that was clear as day they also added I think at least seven or eight more freshmen this year so this team is two-thirds uh, under juniors which is incredible um, the one thing I, I kind of want to highlight is their offense last season it's it's electric at times they, their highest uh, scoring game was 21 in eight innings and then the next game they score zero or, or one run you know that can't happen you know for success so they got they got to clean that up to piggyback off what you said Joe the ERA the thing about the ERA is it doesn't take into account unearned runs, obviously, and I think that their defense could improve a lot going into uh, from uh, as compared to last season because that will also help you save runs, and at the end of the game, if your defense is tight, you're a little bit less worried about your pitching, so that will also generally help your ERA. Now, some of you have alluded to this. Uh, obviously, the season was great last year, but not a complete success. success. Steven, we'll go to you first. What are some improvements the Pioneers can have this season? Yeah, so there, there's four improvements. Obviously, there's a lot more that we kind of highlighted. The number one for me, I put it at the top for a reason. Their NJAC record has been pretty atrocious the past few years. They evened it out at 500 with 9-9 nine and nine last season. But we haven't had a winning NJAC record in six years. Six seasons, we have not had an over 500 record. And at the end of the season, that's how you get into the tournament, with a better NJAC record. Uh, and when you face teams like Montclair, Rowan, Stockton, you're going to need a, 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 you know, you need to play up to their competition. So cleaning that up is is top of the line for me. Chris? Yeah, if I have to go off of that, I'd have to say that the offense, there was only three hitters that we had in the top 50 average-wise in the end, Jack. I think generally just having more base runners is going to help you out in the long run. And if you have people at the top of the lineup who are hitting for average, then you'll be able to bring those runners around more often. We got guys like Dan Carter who can definitely do it. So, Joe? And uh, going off of what Chris said, um, not having a lot of guys with a lot of, you know, a high average getting on base a lot, that usually coincides with hitting a lot of home runs, uh, typically on a team. But the Pioneers were seventh in the NJAC in home runs. They only hit nine all year. Only two guys had more than two home runs. Now that's something that needs to improve. You're going to want to see them both try to hit for average and power more, I think, if they want to put up a lot of runs on the board. Justin? For me, it's got to be defense. Last year, the team had 71 errors. That was almost two errors per game, give or take. Now, errors, it messes with basically everyone. Yeah. Pitchers, you can't get wins. Obviously, it doesn't affect your ERA, but it hurts the bottom line of the win-loss record. And you just put more runners on base that don't have to be there. They just got to clean that up. Right. And there are probably key players that could contribute to the improvements here for the Pioneers team. Justin, we'll go to you first. Who's your most important player that's going to be crucial? Well, for me, SEC? it has to be third baseman Greg Cuevas. Last year, he batted around 277. He had one double and four triples. Now, he also knocked in a few RBIs with 23. Now, he, when he gets on base, he swiped eight bags. So he can mo get, move around the base pads pretty easily. But at the same time, he accounted for 14 of the team's total errors. So he's got to clean up on, on the field. But at the same time, if you have a good third baseman, it makes... It goes a long way. Joe, who do you have? And uh, looking at the team, Matt Ferreira, the second baseman, his numbers really jumped out to me. If you look uh, at the graphic here, he's hitting, he hit 347 last year, put up 13 doubles. So he's driving the ball, he's hitting for a good average, and also uh, his fielding percentage has gone up the last uh, two years. So going into his junior year, I'm expecting big things from the young second baseman. Steven? 
Chris, you alluded to him before, Danny Carter. There's, there's, there's so many words I can say about this kid. He started as a freshman last year. He started all 37 games. Uh, he's he's, he's going to be your everyday right fielder. He batted 354, 51 hits, and 144 at bats, only had 21 strikeouts. He's a typical five tool player. He was a two time NJAC rookie of the week. He had six multi hit RBI games. You know, the list goes on and on. But I think he was arguably the team MVP last year. He's going to be, the, the, you know, the world's going to be on his shoulders for this, this season. Chris, you have. You want to highlight the pitching. Yes, I kind of cheated. I chose two people for this. Uh, uh, two senior pitchers, one being Corey Martinez and the other being Chris Babb. They're both very, very veteran pitchers here. Corey, uh, really a standout last year, 5-3. and three. His 210 ERA was seventh in the end, Jack. He had 42 strikeouts in 64 innings. Definitely our workhorse. Chris Babb, 3-5. and five. His ERA was still under four, 54 strikeouts in 49 innings. Now, neither of these guys are strikeout pitchers, so to say, Chris Babb more so than Martinez. But like I said with the first question, you need to have defense behind you. So with a combination of these two being veterans, they let the ball be hit into play. So the fielders behind you can take care of that, hopefully, for these guys. All right. Good luck to all our pioneers over the coming week. After the break, we head overseas and take a unique look at the UEFA Champions League.